So here's a picture of a, a, of a bottom, again, of a cadaver leg where the sole and frog at the bottom have been pulled off of the surface of the coffin bone. And I think what's really interesting to note, because we can primarily see uh, the, sole, the sole of the foot, specifically the sensitive sole since we've removed the external structures, and the sensitive frog, it's pretty easy to see where the circulation is in the foot. The sensitive sole is engorged with blood vessels. And if we actually cause that part of the foot to bear weight, then the blood vessels that are in the sensitive sole not only have a hard time producing more growth to the sole, but you can actually pinch those blood vessels and cause bruising in the foot. And that's very common this time of the year because the footing is very uneven. There's lots of snowpack out there. There's lots of sharp surfaces because of the ice that the horse walks on. And, and we get bruising in very specific spots. But there are some methods out there that um, are advocated for trimming that actually cause part of the wear, weight bearing to occur with the sole. And I just don't, I don't think that's a very good idea because we can really damage the blood supply to the horse's foot by doing that. Conversely, the sensitive frog is very opaque or very white in color. And so it has very little circulation in it. In fact, it actually has sweat glands in it, and so a lot of times that's why the frog is much more pliable when we look at the bottom of the horse's foot. But because it has very little circulation, we can use shoes like heart bar shoes and temporarily shift the weight supporting, or at least assist with the weight supporting, by a frog plate that covers the frog, and we can't really do a lot of damage by doing that um, as long as it's, of course, applied properly because there's very little circulation there, so we don't cause damage to the horse's foot. Okay, so back to our mid-sagittal or cross-section of the horse's foot where we can see some of the internal structures. And again, we've drawn a line across where the hairline um, would be located. We can see that there are about two and a third bones that are located in each of the horse's feet. Um, the one at the top, known as the short pasture bone or what sometimes people refer to as the middle phalanx or P2 or the second phalangeal bone are all terms that are sometimes used uh, by veterinarians. But P2, just the lower portion of it, is located in the foot. All of the coffin bone or what we sometimes refer to as P3 is inside the foot. And because it's actually been cut in half, we can't see the wings of that coffin bone or P3 on either side so it looks a little bit odd shaped. And then the third bone that's in the foot is what we know, what is known as the navicular bone. And again, that's because it's a cross section, it looks a little unusual in shape, but those bones are really important because the healthier the bones are, the healthier the foot will be. And our whole process is to try to trim those feet around the bones so that we can maintain its health. Okay, besides the bones and the feet and the sensitive and insensitive structures, there are two cushions that are located inside the horse's foot as well as a pair of uh, what we know as collateral cartilages. On the bottom of the foot, um, just above the frog and sort of in and around the sensitive frog is the digital cushion or sometimes referred to as the plantar cushion. And so as that horse walks and bears weight, that digital cushion helps absor absorb shock from the bottom. Around the top of the foot in the area of the coronary band underneath the hairline is what's known as the coronary cushion. And although we think that you know the bottom and outside of the foot probably have to absorb more shock, um, as you'll see from the physiology video here in just a minute, that the coronary cushion really plays a vital role in a absorbing concussion in the area of the hairline. And then on either side of the foot, about half inside the foot and half above the hairline, is a pair of collateral cartilages. And they help to absorb shock, of course, on the side of the foot, but they also help to pump blood because there are blood vessels both between the bone and the collateral cartilage and between the collateral cartilage and the hoof capsule. And so blood is being pumped both while the horse is landing and loading on the foot as well as when the foot is beginning to unload, there's a little secondary pump. So sometimes we refer to the horse as having five hearts because 
each foot acts as a pump itself. And that's really important because when you're considering pumping blood all the way back up the leg, um, especially on a draft horse or a thoroughbred or something like that, we need some kind of mechanism to get that blood supply back up to the heart. Okay, now we've talked about bones, we've talked about sensitive and insensitive structures, we've talked about the cushions of the foot. There are also two main tendons that are located um, inside the horse's foot. There's one at the front that when the horse walks helps extend or pull the foot forward. That's known as the main extensor tendon. And there's one on the back and bottom of the foot that connects to the back and bottom of the coffin bone or P3 known as the deep digital flexor tendon. Well, just as the name implies, it is what helps the foot flex or fold backwards when the horse walks. And that's really an important structure because when that goes up and attaches to a muscle which um, um, originates from a bone higher up in the leg, that tendon has to really function well in order for the horse to be able to gain traction when he's pulling his foot backwards and walking or, or even more importantly running. And so if there's any damage to that tendon, um, the horse can have a lot of problems. Sometimes there's too much tension on that tendon because the muscle and tendon package doesn't grow as fast as the, as the bones do when the horse is growing. And so sometimes we end up with conditions with such things known as club feet. So we have the main extensor tendon on the front that extends the foot forward or pulls the foot forward when the horse moves and the deep digital flexor tendon, or also known as deep flexor tendon, on the back and bottom of the foot that helps flex or fold the foot backwards. Besides the two tendons of the feet, there are two ligaments um, that help hold the navicular bone in place. And what's interesting about the navicular bone, it's sort of like the bar in the middle of a teeter-totter. It's there as a fulcrum point to allow leverage of the tendon to run underneath the surface of the navicular bone and actually be able to pull on the coffin bone that actually causes the horse's foot to move. And so the two ligaments that hold the navicular bone in place are known as the distal navicular ligament, sometimes referred to as the impar ligament, that attaches the navicular bone to the coffin bone. And then on the wings of the navicular bone and on the top surface of it, that actually goes up and connects to um, the bottom of the long pasture bone, or P1, is the suspensory ligament. And it's sort of like a sling that helps hold that bone in place, but it ties it up to the bones above it. So that navicular bone really has a lot of pressure and tension on it because of the work of the deep flexor on the bottom surface of it. Okay, so again, here's a mid-sagittal or cross-section of that horse's foot that we looked at earlier but we can begin to see that there are a number of different structures and they all have a very specific purpose. And when one of those doesn't do its job, then we begin to have problems in the foot. We mentioned a little earlier that the hairline or the, the uh, top part of the foot is where the growth occurs. And so at the bottom, when we trim that horse's foot, we are trimming the oldest part of the foot. So unless we trim it too short, um, we really can't harm the foot unless we just overdo it. Um, because of the sheer length of the toe of the foot and the heel being about a third to half as long as the toe, the very oldest part of the growth is at the toe. And a typical horse's foot takes about a year or 12 months to regenerate itself just because of the distance that it has to grow. And there are a lot of factors that influence that. Um, Different breeds seem to have different growth rates. The age of the horse, in other words, the younger the horse is, the faster the feet grow. And I have some uh, breeding farms that I go to that um, every other trip there to trim horses, I'll trim babies, and then I'll do all the horses every other time because the babies are growing that much faster, about twice the rate of the older horses. The time of the year has an impact on hoof growth. Um, now that it's colder, the ambient temperature is obviously lower. Um, although there's moisture out there, because the temperature is lower, the feet seem to grow slower. And, and then just the general health and the conditions in which that horse is located and nutrition has a big bearing on hoof growth.